Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to tonight's Dhamma session. Last night we talked about happiness, right? Last night, two kinds of happiness. It's the idea that people seeking happiness tend to not find actual happiness. And uh, it goes perhaps without saying that the goal is to find another uh, to find happiness just a different type of happiness hey, it still bears mentioning and discussing the fact that we are trying to find happiness this is our goal this is the The ultimate quest. It's easy to miss that in our practice and to get hung up on unpleasantness with the wrong idea that somehow meditation should be unpleasant. Just as easy it is to get hung up on the idea that meditation should be pleasant. We get hung up, so we, we it's it's clear when you get hung up on meditation as having to be pleasant, then you incline in such a way to avoid unpleasant experiences or those experiences that cause disliking to arise. And the problem, of course, with that is that you can't you can't create a state where you're never in danger of the arising of states that arising of things the encountering of things that might trigger dislike in you but it, it also happens that um, a meditator can get caught up in the idea that, as I said, meditation should be unpleasant And so they become to be averse to meditation They associate meditation with discomfort, with unpleasantness So meditation can be quite uh, unattractive There's a, a sort of a, a there can be an automatic repulsion. Oh, I have to go and meditate again. How, what a chore, what a bother. And that's not good either. That meditators will often come with this as a problem, especially long-term meditators practicing at home, because they're not privy to the sort of calm and tranquility that comes from being in a meditation center. So there's lots of states that have the potential to create dislike. But this is the key distinction, is that the suffering doesn't come from the experience as it comes from our reactions to experiences. And so meditation isn't about... It isn't about constantly as, uh, receiving only those experiences that please us 
and never experiencing anything that displeases us. It's about freeing ourselves from any kind of displeasure. And that's really the only factor in the equation that we have to work out. How to remove displeasure. If you look at the Abhidhamma, it's quite interesting and revealing. We have two, two states, Somanasa and Domanasa. So comes from su, which means good. Do comes from du, which means bad. Do manasa and so manasa. Mana, manasa means mana. Mana means mind. Manas. So manasa. So manasa means mental pleasure, a mental good feeling. A happy mind. And no manasa is the opposite, a displeased mind. But looking at where these two fall is quite revealing. Sorry, there, there's a third one as well. The third one is upeka. Upeka means equanimity or neutrality, a neutral feeling. And so if you look through the types of minds that can arise according to the Abhidhamma, we have the Akusala Mula Chitta and the Sobhana Chitta. So Akusala Mula means those which are rooted in unwholesomeness. And the Sobhana Chitta are, are those rooted in wholesomeness. or No, those that are beautiful, including wholesome and, and wholesome resultant and so on. And so manasa occurs in both. The first eight minds are, are minds of greed. We have so manasa sahagatang ditigata sampayutang asangharikang loba mulajitang ekang. The first mind is a mind with pleasure, with a, with a happy mind, with a happy state of mind. But it's accompanied by views, it's a greed mind. So greed can be accompanied by pleasure. This is why greed is such a tough one. Desire. When you want something, it can be quite pleasant to want. This is why the Buddha said desire is like a sweet poison. It's like it's like bait on a hook. Mm, yummy. We don't see the hook. Desire is, is pleasant, and this is why the problem, this is why we can't trust the pleasantness of an experience as an indicator of the goodness of an experience. And this is what leads some people to say you have to suffer to build character and to think that goodness has to come from unpleasantness. It doesn't have to. In fact, it can't. Because domanasa only occurs in akuslamula. A displeased mind is is only a, only associated with anger. Domanasa sahagatang asangkarikang ekang dosa mula chitang ekang. The mind that is prompted or unprompted that's associated with a patigaha. Domanasa sahagatang patiga sampayutang asangarigang. Aversion. It's only the aversion, the anger minds that have displeasure in them. You can't be you can't possibly have a wholesome mind that is accompanied with displeasure. Now you can have a neutral mind. Your mind can be equanimous. But it can be equanimous when you desire something. So the, the, the loba mula chitta can also have upeka sahagatang, can also be accompanied with equanimity. So to sum up, 
And then, oh, and then you have in the Sobhana Jitta, so just to round it out, with the Sobhana Jitta, so you have Somanasa Sahagatang and Upeka Sahagatang. Jnana Sampayutang and Jnana Vipayutang. So either with wisdom or without wisdom, but either way wholesome. And so, so to sum up, Somanasa, a happy mind, and Upeka can occur in both wholesome and unwholesome minds. So neither one is a is a good sign, is a good indication of the goodness or the the wholesomeness or the unwholesomeness of the mind. But Domanasa can only occur with an anger mind. You can't you can't be displeased when performing good deeds. When, 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 not when performing good deeds, in in the moment of a wholesome state. So I mean, it's a bit technical, but it gets the point across. It makes it sort of clear that too often we get hung up on the pleasure and displeasure, and we don't we aren't we're seeing them rightly. So we get hung up on the idea that if something is pleasant or or calming, then it must be good. But there's a lot of unwholesomeness that's associated with calm and happiness. It's addictive. Any sensation that we like, be it calm or be it a happy sensation, anything associated that brings about this sensation, be it a calm sensation or a a happy sensation when you like it when you desire for it or you desire for that which brings it about that's unwholesomeness and as a re as a result it has craving clinging addiction eventual disappointment and suffering so even meditation can be a source of this if you like something you like the feelings that you get that liking is a cause for stress and suffering. But goodness, goodness also has to be pleasant or calm. When you're practicing meditation or when you're doing other wholesome deeds like giving gifts or keeping moral precepts this all has to be accompanied and it very often is accompanied by joy happiness uh, or or calm it can never be as accompanied by displeasure if you're displeased especially when you're meditating that's a problem that's not good it's not wholesome so even disliking meditation is a good example the problem isn't the meditation the problem is the disliking Now, the other thing it doesn't mean is that there's something wrong with the things that you like or dislike. So it can happen that a meditator will be afraid of pleasure. When they feel happy, they'll think, oh, there's something wrong here. You know, this, this is, I must be attached to something. Or if a meditator feels, un feels displeased or feels... Uh, to, to feel displeased by something, there's pain or there's... This, Restlessness or some kind of agitation in the mind that makes them upset. They think there must be something wrong with their meditation. They must be doing something wrong. But the only thing they're doing wrong is reacting r wrongly. Goodness and, and, and evil, neither one exists inherently in our actions, our speech. Even in our thoughts, they're called akantuka kilesa. And they, akantuka means a visitor. They visit upon our minds. They invade our minds. The Buddha said, babasarang bhikave, babasarang idang bhikave jitang. This mind is radiant, brilliant, pure. But it's defiled by invading defilements. And 
by these visiting defilements that come from time to time and and arise not base not inherent in the experiences or even in the mind but they arise as a result as a result of ignorance as a result of delusion as a result of improper attention in, an improper grasp on our experience So to be clear, it's actually not so much about it, happiness or suffering. I said at the beginning of the talk that the, our goal is happiness, but the practice has nothing to do with happiness or suffering. It has everything to do with our reactions. It has everything to do with changing the way we relate to experience. So it has everything to do with goodness. This is why I always tell meditators, don't worry about happiness. Don't worry about being happy. Don't worry about, am I happy? Am I unhappy? Put your nose to the grindstone and worry about being good, having a good mind. And the good mind always brings happiness. Chittang dantang sukhavahang The trained mind brings happiness But to be clear what that means A good mind A good mind cannot be displeased It can suffer There can be, a, there can be physical pain But the, the good mind You'll know it You'll know it by the purity of it There will be no displeasure in that mind There will either be pleasure Or there will be calm but there will also be purity, there will be no desire, not even any liking of the, of itself, or liking of the experience. The key is not the pleasure or the calm, the key is the purity. When we practice moment after moment, we're about this is what we're trying to create. We're trying to create the pure state of mind that sees the experience as it is, that is here, is present. It's not in the past or the future, or caught up in concepts or views or beliefs, identif identification or judgment. The mind that is not ensnared by the hindrances or the defilements, liking or disliking, worry, agitation, restlessness, doubt, confusion, arrogance, conceit. It's a mind that is free from all of the above. It's a mind that is clear, calm, quiet, content. A mind that is mindful. It is the full mind. Mindful meaning full mind. Like the full moon in all its radiance. There's no half awareness. The mind is not flitting here and there. The mind is fixed and focused on the object like a full moon. No halfway. Worry very much about that mind. Not worry, but Focus your attention very much on that mind, on attaining that mind, that state of mind, that moment, again and again. The moment where you experience something just as it is, with no liking or disliking, or none of the above. No defilement. And that's what brings true happiness. So there you go, there's the Dhamma for tonight. Some thoughts on different types of mind. I have one question on this website today. Is it okay to allow your eyes to open a little bit when meditating as long as I am in a dark room? 
I mean, there's no law, there's no rule against meditating with your eyes open. We tend to prefer having them closed. It's a little too distracting to have your eyes open. Um, you know, so as a means of training, closing your eyes is quite useful. But it's not a rule. I just wouldn't worry about it in that way. Do we have any local questions? Local second life questions? Live questions, I guess is the term. Alright, well thank you all for coming out. Wishing you all a good night and good practice. <coughs>